Well, I say manual on nickel plating, plating of all kinds. Uh, you've got to heat up the plating bath to about 120 degrees in a nice comfy temperature. And like I was saying, the immersion heaters that you get from Caswell are way too big. And uh, so go to the flea market, find an old coffee pot or one of these hot pots and uh, at the thrift store. And the only, of course the problem is they're going to go up to their boiling and all that. So you've got to run this off of your shop variac if you've got a 250 watt uh, variac uh, that's what i run mine off of you can also use a uh, a dimmer control up here uh, a regular incandescent lamp dimmer control just check and make sure that it says it's rated for 600 watts yes Uh, only because I'm really impatient and I wouldn't want to wait around for the for uh, uh, 500 milli, you know, half a liter of, uh, of plating solution to get up to temperature. The, this, I can be up and running ready to plate in 10 minutes. And the voltage will be somewhere between, for nickel plating, it would be somewhere between two and a half and five volts. There, lots of variables on what that will be and the it's a current is the issue current per air unit area and so the bigger the parts the more current you're going to need and uh but in practice it looks like uh, my unit is reporting that it's getting using between about half and three amps maybe maybe five amps but it needs to be current limited, especially when you're doing an arrangement like this where I just take my hardware and I hang it on uh, copper wire. And so I have it hanging on one side, all my parts, the anodes on the other side, and you have to keep either the parts in motion or the plating bath in motion all the time. And when, when that happens, you can short out to the anode when you're, so you need to have a power supply that, that is not going to uh, uh, provide gigawatts of uh, power, you know, when you short it out. Uh, here, there's several ways to do that. And uh, one of them is if you have a, an old uh, battery charger that's not too smart, and by that, some, some of them have controls in there. And I put a, I took a little piece of an extension cord and put a, a 60 watt light bulb in series with the extension cord. And that acts as uh, primary side current limiting. And so I can uh, set my uh, battery charger up and uh, even if I short the output, it's not going to draw uh, dangerous amounts of current. And it, it's cheap. Most people, a lot of people have battery chargers. Go to a ham fest. Oh, oh, what a Saturday morning, maybe out here. You'll find uh, an industrial, in this case, a KEPCO a laboratory uh, or industrial power supply, but it has current limit on And you just get one that goes zero to 15 volts or whatever, and maybe uh, depending on, uh, they put a lot of different power supplies into the same package. So you gotta read the, the scales and see what it is. That uh, little yellow sticker on the top there says 10 bucks, and it also has a sticker that says it was good. And in this case, he wasn't lying, it was good. And uh, of course, in the flea market this morning at 6.30 in the morning, there was a six volt, 12 volt power supply out there for five bucks. And that, that's the one that I use mostly because they've got those, just a, 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 a transformer with a few taps on it and some copper oxide rectifiers and it never know, it, it could care less because it's dead shorter. And, uh, some, some, I don't think I've ever even blown a fuse in the thing, but uh, you can get those. So you don't need an exotic supply, but the parts have to be 
shiny to begin with. Like I told you, good nickel plate is only fractions of a thousandths of an inch thick. So don't put dull parts in. Nickel is really tough material and you're not going to polish it out afterwards. Uh, and the way you polish it up is you use uh, four inch cotton buffs that you can actually buy at, at uh, uh, Sears Roebuck. And, uh, well, I try to guess they call it just Sears now. But uh, they also have uh, kits with white rouge sticks in them and red rouge sticks. And you buff your parts with that on a drill press or in your drill and uh, get them to the level of sheen that you really uh, expect to have in the finished product. And you always have to wash the solvent off because and string the parts on your wire. And remember that the wire will shadow the current. So you make your connections at an inconspicuous part. Like on a screw, you, you wrap your wire around the thread. So that nobody's gonna care. And electroplating is an electrochemical process. So you've got to be chemically clean when you go into the bath. And so, uh, I give it a quick zap in sodium bisulfate just before I go into the bath and you're ready. Is it up to 120 F yet? You drop the parts in for five or 10 seconds before turning on the current to allow them to get up to the same temperature as the plating bath. And then you turn the current on and you have to keep that constant motion going because the bubbles that form at the surface, they're insulators, and that causes uneven plating. So you use constant agitation to keep those bubbles uh, in check. And you'll poison the bath. I mentioned poisoning the bath by, in this case, if you start out with bare copper wire that you're stringing parts on. If you were to drop that into the bath and just leave it, the copper would migrate out into the solution and that contaminates the bath. You don't do that. So you have your temperature upright, you put the parts in, you wait maybe five, no more, 10 seconds, and then you start plating so that you're not contaminating the bath with that copper. And like I said, in most of Virtually all my plating, I, I don't think more than five times in the last 10 years, I've plated in a larger container than this. And if you got a dull finish on shiny parts, it probably means that you were applying too high current. You had your voltage set too high and the current was too high and it'll, it'll get uh, rough, dull. And if the nickel plate flakes like uh, um, like like Lloyd, Lloyd or Floyd? Floyd. I, I'm sorry. And how, how long have I known you? <laughs> Twenty-five years. But uh, he had problems with some nickel plating. If it's flaking, it's because you've got a contaminated surface. You don't have that electrochemical purity that you need to plate. So uh, better to just clean it over, polish it off, start all over. And uh, but each time you need to, when you get through, you dip it down into the boiling water on the, or the hot water on the side here that you've got going outside of your pot to rinse off all the excess plating solution and force dry it again. And uh, what about other finishes like coloring brass or making solder joints look old or making nickel plate look not so new? And there's another great source that you can go to, which is Jack's Chemical Company. And they're in the jewelry business and, and uh, arts, metal arts. And they have this material called Jack's Brown and it's a darkener for brass uh, and copper and uh, 
bronze. And I brought this radio in as an example of, if you're wondering how they finished escutcheons back in the 30s, they used that chemical process. And in this case, I had a pretty nice bezel here, but there were two big green spots of corrosion on this. It looked really bad. So I used the, uh, the uh, Jack's Brass, or Jack's Brown on there, and finished this out. So you can see how they match up very well. Your Zenith, nice big 12-tube uh, Zeniths and all that, you, you come, you often see them where they're screaming yellow brass bezels on that. That isn't the way they were there originally. But, uh, and it's, it's a quick process and it's very easy to do. And you always coat, after coloring the brass, you always coat it with a lacquer or a varnish. Then, in the telegraphy and all, you see a lot of brass hardware that's turned black. And so, they have another magic soup that will turn stuff black. And I found out something that was wonderful about this. And that is the secret to making old looking soldering joints. When, when I do a restoration and I have to go in and I, I redo some joints, you have those new solder joints that are just yelling that, hey, I was serviced this week, you know, or, or whatever. I don't look like I'm 80 years old. Well, the Jack's Black, you'll take your joint and you'll uh, clean it with alcohol to get the flux off. You'll scratch the surface a little bit with a very fine little stainless steel or, or brass brush to just scuff it, just like that. No, nothing, no digging, no, no powering up the Dremel Moto tool to, to buzz it off. It's just to make a few little scuff marks on there. And then get a uh, Q-tip and put a drop of the Jack's Black on there and then put it on your joint on the joint. And bingo, 80 years and 80 seconds. Because that joint will look as old as anything you have in your 20s vintage set in a little over a minute. When you get the color, when you get it to look the way you like it, you have to get a cotton ball saturated with distilled water and uh, just dab it off any excess and force dry again. And this uh, coating doesn't seem to have a detrimental effect in a long time, uh, over the long run. And, but it's, I don't know if you saw that DeForest uh, 15 panel set here last year, that if you looked at, at the back side of it, all the wiring looked old but all the wiring was new. So, uh, try it, it works great. Also, I noticed on their site, when you do your nickel plating, you have these bright, shiny parts, and they kind of scream new as well. And I was just uh, grabbing some screenshots for this talk, and I see that they have a uh, magic suit for darkening nickel, and I'm gonna get that. I don't know how it's gonna work, but. The other stuff works great. Uh, for our purposes, these are lifetime supplies, these bottles. And you just use a, a few drops at a time. 